Yeah, good evening and welcome to Living Spirit Ministries. It is the 31st of May. Say that one more time. If you're with me, the 31st of May, and we are just a few hours away from getting into June. If you're here on the eastern coast of the United States in the Eastern Standard Time, uh, if you're some of the parts across the world, if you're in Kenya, you're already there. If you're in Germany, you're already there, right? If you're a couple of other places, you're already there. But for those of you all who are watching this live, those who will come in tape delayed, whatever day it may be, whatever date it may be, know that it's the Lord that goes before you and goes with you It is well. And so we are coming before you tonight. We're learning about your commitment levels to your practice in Christ. The overarching theme for us here at Living Spirit Ministries this year, as we're about to be halfway through the year, is walking in the image of God. And part of that walking in the image Part of any walk is a commitment level, and part of that commitment is your practice. And so we're learning about that uh, in, a, in a very non-threatening way, uh, as opposed to what some would say. The, the Word of God tells us to study and show thyself approval. A workman need not be ashamed, but rightly divide the Word of God. And so that's what we're doing, but we understand that it's the Word that convicts. It's the Spirit who convicts. Right. And so allow that word to, to motivate you to be better. I came across the pulpit two weeks ago and I said, hey, listen, listen, the Lord blesses us with correction and direction. I want you to receive that with me today. I want you to receive that. The Lord blesses us with correction and direction because if he didn't love us enough to correct and direct us, he could just get rid of us or allow us as he tells us through Paul in Romans 1, to allow those who are so far gone, to, he hands them over to a reprobate mind, to allow them to go over to their inhibitions, right? But he allows us through his instructions, he allows us through the light of his glory, he allows us to bear witness to that and to change, to change course and direction without forcing us. And so that's what we're here today. We're here to learn why our practice in Christ is important, why our commitment level determines the the, the 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 level of practice right the frequency of practice and we've we've talked sports we've talked about the arts in terms of music and in terms of your jobs we talked about all these things and tonight we're going to go a little bit deeper in and hopefully you find something that I said something is seen heard in it whatever it is hopefully it will change and alter attributes it'll change and alter attitudes and a change and alter ultimately lives. And I'm speaking to both the believer and the unbeliever. Our desire is, is that you learn to walk again, one step at a time, by within through the word of God, by within through the Holy Spirit of God, that we might move away from the thing called this world, right? Sanctify, if you will, spiritual mature is what I like to say, and move a step closer to our God. That's, that's a process. It's not going to happen overnight. But we continue, we continue to press, like Paul says, not that we've already attained it, but we press, we yeah, press, we press, we press. And that is determined by your practice. Are you practicing in the world, right? Or are you practicing for the kingdom? Because when you're regenerated, aka born again, saved, if you will, then your witness ought not be to that of the world anymore. And that's that that that's not where we ought to be. Our witness must be to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Therefore, our testimony is not of ourselves, but the seed of Christ that is operating within you. Come on, I'm talking to somebody today. That testimony is the seed of Christ. And if you allow it, that testimony will shine and reflect the light of Christ, which will go into the darkness and separate the darkness from, from, from the people that God is trying to send you to. He's assigning you to places where you never thought that you would be. But if you're not practicing, if your walk isn't building that endurance that the author of Hebrews in 10, in 10 tells us that you have need for endurance, for after you've done the will of God, then you shall receive the promise. We're walking one step at a time, learning to walk again, one step at a time. And that means separating ourselves from the things of this world, the attributes, the attitudes, and the associations, all those things. And so that's what we're learning here. And we're we're going about about eight weeks strong now in terms of this particular subsection. And that's in order to walk in the image of God. And so uh, this is a subsection of a subsection. And so uh, you're practicing Christ. And then we talked about, are you committed to your practice in Christ? And so this all leads to our service to Christ, our service to God. And that's sandwiched between our commitment and abiding in him. Are you committed? 
to serve, and then will you abide in it? And so tonight we're going to learn, we're going to explore a little bit further. So if you're a first-time attender and this sounds good to you, well, then buckle on in. Hopefully you have the word, which is your sword. If not, get up on that digital device. We're going to break down some scripture today. We're coming from the book of James, right? And uh, if you're a repeat attender, then come on along with us. Come along with us. It's going to be a good ride. Hopefully, hopefully this thing will, will, will change some lives because I believe that every time the word of God goes forth, a seed is being planted and not just any seed, the seed of Christ. And God tells us in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 55, that his work shall not go up void. And the word of God is the son of God, right? It's Jesus Christ. And, and that word shall not go up void. He says what he means and he does what he says. And so do you believe God tonight? That's the question. Do you believe him? All right. So we're going into prayer tonight with expectation that he is who he says he is. He'll do what he says he'll do, and he'll do it for you, for me, for we, for us. Let us go into prayer. Heavenly Father, we call to you tonight, knowing that we have no right, no expectation to ask of anything, but Father God, because of your majesty, and Father God, because you are splendor in your glory, Father God, we stand in awe before you tonight, Father God. We humbly come before you, humbly broken, Father God, and not the finished work. And Father God, we are a work in progress, and Father God, we ask that your hands your gentle, your merciful and gracious hands be upon heart, mind, body, and soul, Father God, that there might be a transfusion, that you might release, Father God, as we release. We release self to increase in you, Father God. And as we, Father God, as we depart from self, Father God, fill us with your anointing of your spirit, Father God, and let your word flow through us, equipping and empowering and encouraging us, Father God, for the fight that is this day, this hour, this very moment. And so, Father God, as we come before you and as we make this request, Father God, we do so with the expectation, the expectation that you will do what we ask, Father God, because it is good and pleasing to your sight, Father God. And Father God, we, we grasp wholly your word, Father God, and not just any word, but your word, Father God, the sovereign word, the sovereign word of the most high God, Father God, that will complete our works, Father God, that will strengthen us when we are weak, Father God, that will make the crooked path straight, that will illuminate our past, Father God, and give us a righteousness not of our own. Yes, Father God. God, we call now, Father God, to the highways and the byways that your work might go yes. out and create a seismic activity, Father God, that it might not just tickle a fancy, but Father God, edify the soul, Father God, and allow them to turn from self, Father God, and turn back to you. So, Father God, we're sending your light out to the believer that he and she might be equipped, empowered, and encouraged to go to the front lines. And, Father God, as the unbeliever hears, Father, we ask that something is said that would significantly alter their opinion about you, Father God. Yes, Father. Believe it until the end, Father God, that Jesus is the way, Father God, that he is an open door and that your grace is freely given. And by that grace, Father God, we are saved. Yes, Father. Now, Father God, if they believe, Father God, that in Christ crucified, that you sent him to the cross, your son, the right conduit for the defendant of power source, that there will be an exchange. And you sent Jesus Christ to the cross for us, for our sins, Father God, and you placed them upon him. That was your work. You placed our death upon him. That was your work, Father God. He was crucified, buried, and rose again. Father God, whoever believes that and believes that your son is seated at your right hand side and will come again. Yes. Father God is saved today, is born again, regenerated, if you will, and is a new thing. Now, Father God, let their hearts, minds, bodies, and souls believe to the utmost, Father God, yes. that you are for them and no one can be against them. Now, Father God, let this word and Father God saturate our hearts, let it penetrate our hearts, and let it forever alter our lives. We give you the glory, the honor, and praise, and we thank yes, you now for forgiveness of sins, past, present, and future. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So we give glory to our God, the most high God, and the one who brings us this day, this hour, this very moment. For those of you all who remember the shows and say this show is sponsored to you by X, Y, and Z, where our lives are sponsored by the blood of Jesus Christ. Can we, wherever you are, give a hallelujah, and thank you, God. That blood is still redeeming. It's still saving. It's still delivering. It's still enhancing us. It is the performance enhancing, right? It, we, we talk about all these things, these great quicker fixer, picker uppers, but the blood of Christ is all we need. His grace, his yes. grace, his grace, his grace. It's sufficient. And so that's going to be that's going to be something to put in the back of your mind as we go forth. Um, I, I kind of gave a little bit of spoiler if you're listening to exhortation uh, in terms of the word of God and being sufficient for us. And so as we go forth tonight, I want you to, to focus on the word of God, because the word of God is often overlooked by other words that are in our lives to help to define us and shape us. But I, I give you the exchange of allowing the word of God to, to, to shape and to mold you. Now, the slide that you're seeing before you uh, is a slide that we use for a good portion of this year, but we had kind of gone away from it because it was supposed to 
I was supposed to uh, jump right into the word, but I kind of stalled out. I got excited about some other things, but it's okay. It's okay. But but here, this is to, to really orient us into the upper left-hand corner there. It's Ephesians 4, 22 to 24, and it's really talking about the former and then the present and the future, right? The former, the present, the future, and it talks about the, the, the image of God and that image of God that we should be presenting. And so to, to keep us on task, you'll see in the lower left-hand corner there, walking in the image of God. That's, that is our, our, our mission for this year. That's what we're focused on. That is, that is what we're, our, our, our living spirit ministries, that's what our focus is for this year, walking in the image of God. Last year, it was sound investment strategy. And we talked about why you are God's most precious possession and why he went all in and why he continues to invest in you. And why that return on investment is you simply living your best life ever through the word of God, through the spirit of God, through the blood of Christ and going forth and using all those tools to go out and spread God's light into the world. So a continuation of this is, so how do we do this? Well, we're, 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 we're walking images of God. And so we talked about what is the image of God if no one has seen the image of God. And we talked about his righteousness and we talked about his holiness and we talked about all these things. Why do we need to walk into that if... Our doctrinal position is, is that once we come to Christ, once we have believed in him for, yes. for eternal salvation, if our position is secure, in other words, we have a reservation in heaven. Why do we need to do anything? Oh, it's, it's all good. Well, there's a lot of rewards at risk. There's a lot of things, premature death. Now, the life that you're saving might not just be your own. Others might be called, uh, might, might be caused to stumble because you're in action or because of your actions. And so walking in image of God, first and foremost, brings glory to God. And that's what truly our mission is, is that, and that as great as it is to be saved in this and that, our number one mission and part is to bring glory to God. And when we, when we come to Christ and we believe in him for eternal salvation, we bring glory to God. When we, when we act and, and we walk and, and we do these things and when we speak, the things of God. We bring glory to God, right? And so walking in that image of God has, has a lot to do uh, with the new man, the new woman and who we are. Because in our old selves, we're definitely not walking in the image of God. We are diametrically opposed to doing the things that are pleasing to God. Good enough is not good enough. And if you want to take a quote from me, then that's that's how I foresee the Sermon on the Mount. Good enough is not good enough. Your self-righteousness, my self-righteousness isn't enough to get you into heaven. And that's where God wants you to be. Awesome God, isn't it? No matter how far we have gone astray, God wants us to be back with him. He sent his son into the world, right? If you know nothing else about the Bible, the good news, the gospel is, and it's smattered all throughout the, the, the Bible from cover to cover, greatest love story ever written, is that God loves you and he wants you to be back with him. He understands your condition. He understands my condition. And he knows that we're in need of a savior. And that savior is Jesus Christ. And the shedding of that blood, the atoning work, the work, not all works, is what saves us, according to Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, according to Titus 3 and 5, according to Romans 5, 1 through 2, right? That's his work, and that's what he has given to us. He freely gives it to us. Who are we to deny that gift? Okay, who are we to deny that gift? But you're saved, now what? Okay, we just twiddle our thumbs, we, we come to church, is this good enough? But God wants to give you more. And we built that case starting at the beginning of the year about being plugged in and switched on. And you hear me periodically saying this. John 15, going throughout, it talks about what are you connected to? And it talks about if you, and this is where I get the, 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 the only acceptable conduit, the, the, the going to the definitive power source, the proper conduit, and using the illustration of a plug going into an outlet. There's a lot of different type of plugs that, that you can try to jam into the wrong outlet. It might spark, it might shortchange, or it might underwhelm, and just it's not going to work. But the proper conduit into the proper outlet gives you an exchange that allows you to run according to capability. It'll recharge you, it'll sustain you, it'll give you updates, it'll do all those things. And so when Christ tells us about the true vine and a vine dresser, we, we often fear the slicing and the dicing of the Heavenly Father. But what he tells us in there is that he desires for us to have more. Now think about it. We're sinners, but yet he allowed Christ to come into the world and atone for our sins, and he wants us to have more, but there's some conditions there. We have to shed off some things. We have to get rid of some things, and that's willingly yielding 
It's that key there, willingly yielding and abiding. And you see that in John 15 and 7. If you abide in me and my word abides in you, and you shall ask and it shall be given to you. By this, my father is what? It's glorified. Again, our, our doctrinal mission to bring glory and honor to the name of our God. That you bear much fruit and be. That, that word is all is littered all throughout this text. And more, more, more. Him that he will sustain you. That's always been the case in the point. But it's when we go sideways. And so when we talk about I'm saved, now what? Right? So now here you are. You're either going for or against him, even in this new state. And so that's what Paul tells us. And he tells the church of Ephesus, right? He, he tells the Ephesians as, as non-doctrinal teachings were going into there, as is the Judaizers and Gnosticism and all these things were going in. And he reminds them, he tells them, right? You were taught with regard to your former way of life, to put off your old self. And that's what I, what I implore you all to do. To put off your former self, which is being corrupted by his deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude, right? It starts in the mind, it's a mindset. Start new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self. Right? New walk. Sure. Right? Created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Right? That sounds like an image of God, that righteousness and that holiness. And so when you see center sector at the bottom there, you see this gentleman and all roads lead to the cross. I'm a firm believer into that. Every bit of preaching and teaching that I give you should always lead you back to the cross. Right? It's not by our works, but by the grace of God. It's our faith in the work. The shedding of the blood redeems us. Right, The faith in, in the one who shed the, the blood, the, the, the only acceptable sacrifice, the faith in Jesus Christ, the faith in God's word allows us to have interest in that. Faith alone, right? Ultimately, the grace of God, freely given. Okay, And so all roads lead back to that. So the cross is our compass, the Holy Bible. Right, as our roadmap, our instructions, and not in the Holy Spirit as our GPS, God position saints. And so when we talk about why do we practice? Well, in, in, in the natural, it talks about practicing is the only way you can make your desired skill your best friend. All right. So then we 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 talked about what are you practicing? What are you practicing? Are you practicing the things of God or are you practicing the things of the world? Because here, Paul tells us we got to change our mind and put on that new self. Well, in that new self and a new mindset means that we have to forsake the things of the flesh. We got to get rid of those things. And, and I told you that there's clothes that you have that don't fit you anymore. I'm not calling you fat. I'm just telling you to take off that weight, the burden of sin, the burden of anxiety, the burden of fear, all those things that he talks about in Galatians 5 that are evidence of the flesh. But he says, love, peace, joy. Right, happiness, long suffering, self control, those are the fruit of the spirit. And he, and, he, and, he, and he talks these things, Paul does. And so, that righteousness, that holiness, are you practicing those things? That you might edify your brothers and your sisters, right? That you might not cause those within the body of Christ to stumble, that you might not cause those in the world to doubt your testimony, which is the seed of Christ and not the testimony of Earl, Ray, Ray, and Pookie in there, right? Um, because that all leads someplace, but not to God. Romans 6 and 23 says it's, you, you know, the wages of sin is death, right? Think about that for a second. Right? Dramatic pause included, and the wages of sin, dot, 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 is death. But what? The gift of God is everlasting life. And so there's none righteous among us, not one, Romans 3 and 10, and all the sin and fall short of the glory of God, Romans 3 and 23, but we go to Romans 6 and 23, and he tells us that the gift of God is everlasting life. And he goes and tells us in Romans 5, preceding that, he says, now that we are justified by faith, right? And so that's that's that little puzzle that I was putting together. We're, we're, we, 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 we are redeemed by the shedding of the blood. We're justified by our faith in that blood, but ultimately the grace of God is what saves us. So he says, now that we are justified by faith, we have peace with God. And so you pivot forward to Romans 8, he says, there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And you go all the way to the end there, he says, he tells us that, that nothing will separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. So we have a compelling case there. We have a compelling case. And so this practice in the natural says is, is the only way you can make your desired skill your best friend. So are you practicing in the things of the world or are you practicing in the things of the kingdom? And this is what Jesus warns us about in, in the Sermon on the Mount. Because good enough 
isn't good enough. It's just not going to be it. So he tells us and implores us in Roman uh, and in Matthew 6 and 33 to seek first the kingdom of God. All right. And in Romans 5, he talks about the kingdom blessings, the Beatitudes, if you will. And he talks about in, in Matthew 7, he talks about learning about those blind spots in terms of getting rid of the plank out of our eyes instead of going and, and picking at other folks and then build on a proper foundation by not just being hearers, but doers. It's that, that, that doing practice, not only committing to serving, but abiding in the things that are what we committed to in the first place. It seems very intuitive, but it's more complicated because the world happens. It comes at us 24 seven and our adversary is very good at what he does, but guess what? God is better. And so, so not that I've ever called anyone a loser, but nobody wants to be on a losing team. And guess what? Spoiler, you know, team X over here, the world, they lose. And team A over here, the A team, they win. And so, you either pay me now, pay me later. So your practice, your practice helps with focusing better on your skills. So does that not sound like something, whether you've been in a church for a hot minute or, or you've been in there for a long time or a short time, you, you want to practice. They say practice makes perfect. And as Paul says, not that I've already attained it, but one thing I do, yes. and he doesn't look back, but he presses forward. So he realized he hasn't received that glorified body that he talks about in Romans 8. He says, I consider the present sufferings not worthy to be compared to the, the future glory that shall be revealed in us. So, so he understands that that future salvation, that glorification, that glorified body is yet to come in, in the past salvation, that justification. But the present day is that sanctification. So we're, we're, we're getting those spiritual curls. We're getting those spiritual steps on. We're, we're doing those things that allows us to focus better on our skills, our skills that Christ has left with us. And the Holy Spirit is yearning to put into us, to deposit into us. We allow him, he'll fill us just like he did on the day of Pentecost. There are gifts that he gave to men and women, to the church. He gave us those gifts. We're using them. And that power has not gone out in the church. We just need to plug in and switch on. But it goes further here and says, enables you to understand your art better and give you time to reflect upon your shortcomings to improve them with time. And enables us to see our blind spots. Practice, practice, practice. Why do we practice? Those are the reasons. So we thank FSM Buddy there for providing that for us. So we talk about it. So what in the world does this have to do? All right. So we're going a little further here. Follow me here. Follow me, and follow, follow me here. Well, you, 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 you got to have, you, you got to, you, you got to build up the appetite here sometimes. This is a full course meal here. And and, and we got to go on. We got to go on. Okay. And so so we got a whole bunch on this screen. Yeah, I think it's it's flipped over. Okay. And just to orient you here, we got our trivia. I know you love some trivia. It's in Jeopardy-esque type of style there. All right. We got some considerations. We've got our main text. We've got a little graphic pictorial there. And then we, we got some other things. All right. So are you committed to your practice in Christ? That, that's just such a relevant question. If you're, if you're not asking yourself questions every morning when you wake up uh, or at every time that you go to bed, mm -hmm. uh, try, try to take a look at that, right? Hey, Lord, you got me up today and you don't make mistakes. Remember, my challenge to you last year and going into this year is to live this thing called life on purpose. Because you serve an intentional God. We don't have time tonight to go and break it down, but we'll, we'll, we'll revisit that. But you you serve an intentional God. He says what he means, means what he says. And that's, that's, that's why I like to harp on that. But if you live this thing called life on purpose, not in your own words, but God's word. You notice I'm using the, the word, word, a lot tonight. It's, it's on purpose. Get into this diatribe here. But words mean things, okay? And God's word is the definitive thing. And if you allow it to guide and direct you, if you allow it to guide and direct you, if you allow it to guide and direct you, it will edify you, right? It's just the word is sharper than any two-edged sword. It cuts down to the narrow sword. So, uh, all gospel is God-breathed, according to the NIV. According to the New King James and the King James Version, it's in, it's the inspired word of God. In other words, it comes from the, 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 the Latin word of inspire, breathe into, it's just the same. Inspiration, inspire, breathe into it. it's His word, the inerrant word of God, equips, empowers, and encourages you. Equips, empowers, and encourages you. So put God's word into your mouth. Equips, empowers, and encourages you. It's going to be important here, re real shortly. 
So what are we talking about in terms of your practice? We talked about uh, not just hearing, but doing the last two weeks, right? Hearing and doing, hearing and doing. So last week we went into to the book of Matthew, uh, Matthew 7, right? And talked about Jesus saying that whoever hears my word and does it, I liken it to a man, a wise man. No one wants to be considered to be wise. A wise man who builds his house upon a rock. And he talks about the storms. He talks about the floods. They come, but they won't be moved. But those who hear his word and don't do it, it's like an unwise person. Foolish is what he actually says. Uh, the storms and flood comes and destroys him. So he's he's speaking soteriologically that, that in terms of the doctrine of salvation there. He's also talking about eschatologically. He's telling you that his righteousness is the way back to God. And that's what God uses his word to do, to draw men and women back onto him, to bring glory and honor to his name. But those who refuse it, in the end, will be judged and destroyed, and it will be their own doing, right? They hear it, but they won't do it. But those who hear and do, in other words, those who commit their ways to it, and serve it, and they abide in it, the world is their oyster, right? But those who don't, they got some problems. So, our trivia question for tonight, right? Trivia question. In the form of Jeopardy, and for those who aren't familiar with Jeopardy, the answer is the question. And then you got to go back forth and, and give what what would the actual question be. So if I say um, Sunshine State, and the proper response here in the States would be, what is Florida? Right? Okay, so, um, right? It's, it's, there we go. So what you have here is the answer unruly evil full of deadly, deadly poison now before y'all go and say serpent that's not the answer what is sand on the tongue talicia <laughs> here is jumping the gun again so so which one is it pastor talicia and for all the all the all that are still typing on facebook go ahead and type it what is it now again i'm not that deep so generally speaking Somewhere on the slide is the answer. And I gave you graphic pictorials. I gave you letters. I gave you even little asterisks floating around here. So the answer is generally speaking somewhere in the vicinity. So it will give you about three, four more seconds. Um, anyone on, on Facebook? Let me see. I didn't see. Okay. So the answer is unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. I said it's not a serpent. All right. In the format, in the phrase of a question, and you didn't form it in the phrase of a question. Oh, okay. So what is the tongue? And, yes. What is the tongue? All right. And you can see that in the lower right-hand corner there. You can also see it over in the left over there. And so, um, and, and so we'll, well, you also see it in a big graphic pictorial there. So depending upon how big your phone or whatever electronic device that you're looking at, you may or may not be able to see that accurately, but it's there. It's there. And so my considerations and reflections to this week are, are pretty simple. Consider what comes out of your mouth. It's all about practice. Practicing. We'll build a case tonight. And, and our reflection, so I want you to reflect upon um, if it brings glory to God. Now, I pontificate. You see how all this links together. The, the pontification, it all links together. We're talking about words and where the words come out, they come out of the mouth and they flow through your tongue. Um, is the study of languages, right? La lingua in Spanish is, is talking about your tongue and so it, just all kind of things connected. We're, so what comes out of your mouth? I need you to consider that. What comes out of your mouth? I'm guilty of it sometimes. Uh, probably more often than I'm, I'm really aware of. It's not always the positive things of speaking the word of God. And so then I got to get into the word of God. What does God say about the situation? And so then you speak the things of God upon your situation. You'd be amazed at how quickly those things turn around. Now you get around like-minded people and, and, and that spirit convicts you, the Holy Spirit convicts you. You're going to get into God's word. Now you're standing together with a group of people. Some powerful things, putting God's word into the atmosphere, putting God's word into your household, putting putting God's word into schools, putting God's word into municipalities, putting God's word into the workplace. Lord, right? It's just where two or three are gathered in my name, there I'll be in the midst. 
it's for us who can be against it, right? Or two, or touch it, agree on anything, then he'll get a harsh desire. And that's Matthew 18, for if you need a doctrinal reference. But but the words that come out of our mouth are of the utmost importance. So let me let me give you one more doctrinal reference here. Doctrinal reference. And this came through um, the Holy Bible app this morning and death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit Proverbs 18 and 21 death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit consistency throughout the old and new testament check it out all right so your consideration as you as you go to bed tonight what comes out of your mouth Hmm. What's coming out of the mouth? And then I, I ask that you reflect as you as you, if the Lord allows you to make it to Sunday and you come back with us, reflect upon if it brings glory to God. Yeah. All right. And I will tell you a spoiler. I, I, I told you about my shortcomings. And so when I need to get right, no better place than the Bible. Okay. It's, was this 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 was uh, serving up apps long before uh, your iPod, iPad, mm-hmm. was the precursor to the iPod, mm-hmm. and the, the, all those things, right? So the Apple I, I Store has nothing compared to the Bible. Matter of fact, I, I w- if I was the Bible writers, I would go with copyright infringement on to Apple and to Google and all these folk because um, bottom line is, is that everything that you need is here. Everything that you need, everything. So if if there's anything that you have questions about what you should speak over, what you should should go over, go to the Bible. Go, go to the Bible, go to the Bible, go to the Bible. Glory to God. All right. So reflect upon if it brings glory to God. So why is that? So I right. say, Pastor, why is that? Okay, well, it's great, great question. Great. So here we have in James chapter three. Start at the second verse, James chapter three. All right. I know I skipped chapter two, but that's for another reason. But here we're talking about practice. Are you committed to your practice? And I can think of no better way than our communication. Our communication. If you look at Genesis, my one of my favorite books, Genesis, God spoke a thing and it was so. God speaks a thing and it's so. So Genesis chapter one, Genesis chapter two, and John chapter one all talk about the power of God's word. And in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. All right? And so in Genesis, in, in Genesis chapter word, one, he said, let there be light. Right? And he talked about for six days, he spoke, it was so, spoke, it was so, spoke, it was so. So God is so powerful. He speaks it is so. But yet he took six days to create all the earth and all the things, all the accoutrements. I mean, that's pretty powerful. He is very methodical and, and, and meticulous in creating just this day. That's where I get where he's an intentional God. Think about that. So, so everything that we have could have been created in a millisecond, less than a millisecond, but he took his time. He took his time to think of you, me, we, us, in spite and despite of the things that we would do, good, bad, and ugly, right? So the power of that, and we talk about the overarching theme of walking in the image of God. So the power of God is in his in His word, right? You have him at his word. He swore on two immutable things that he cannot lie. His word shall not go out void according to Isaiah 55, right? It, it, it's just, it's powerful. The word is sharper than any two-edged sword. All gospels, God breathe. The word, the word of God is definitive. Man's time. It was, it is, and it will continue to be. And it's powerful. And when you learn to wield it, right, mm-hmm. everything around you must bow to it. Use it appropriately. Use it with caution. It's God's word of convicts. It's not me. It's not my words will take you someplace, but then I'm going to take you to where it needs to be. And so learn God's word. Use God's word. Apply God's word to every situation. And so what we're going to learn tonight is, is, is that this, this, this mouth, this tongue can use a lot of things. And it'll take you someplace, but it's not going to necessarily take you to where you need to be. So walking in image of God includes talking the things of God, talking with the authority of God. And if you go further down into Genesis, he gave all power and authority 
to mankind, to man and to woman. And so if, when we really start breaking that thing down, and I gave some spoilers when we were in that respective chapter, that he gave us dominion over all of these things. And so when that serpent came in with some slick talk, we we really didn't have power to shut it down right there. And this is what Christ tells us and through his word right now. We have all, he says, all power and authority was given to me. And he tells us that the greater things we will do in his name. And so whatever he bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, where he loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Right? So we have that power. Luke, Luke 9, 1 and 2 says we can lay hands on the sick and they shall be healed. We shall, we shall you know, cast out demonic spirits in, in, in his name. We, we have the power to so do those things, but it's what you're putting in the mouth, right? And so this is this is very informative. And if you haven't got into it, man, I tell you what. James makes a very compelling case. And if you didn't check us out the, the, the last couple of weeks and I can tell you about how powerful God's testimony is in each and every one of us, James saw his brother, Christ, Jesus Christ. I didn't believe he was in Christ, but bam! That the resurrection, it, it compelled them. And he comes with some strong work, some strong talk to, to the tribes of Israel, right? To the, to the remnants. He comes and this word is left to us for good edification. And so we're here in James chapter three, and verse two, building upon the word of God in Genesis chapters one, chapters two, and in John uh, chapter one, the word of God. James comes back to us and tells us here the importance here. And, 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 and James three and two says, for we stumble, says for we all stumble, right? Not just we stumble. We all, that word ALL is such a powerful word. We all stumble in many things. Right? Can we can we just be truthful about that? You, me, we, us. I tell you, I can't walk on, on flat ground without stumbling. Now, there's an obstacle there. It's just even more challenging. But we all stumble in many things, right? Mentally, emotionally, physically, mm -hmm. spiritually. But James goes on and says, if anyone does not stumble in word, uh -oh. See, that's why I've been harping on that 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 W word, the word word um, tonight. It says, for if anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man. Right. But what how do we avoid falling? How do we avoid stumbling? Well, we practice. We perfect that craft as we talked about in the natural. So why would it be any different in the spiritual realm? If you only pick up this thing called the Bible when the preacher man, preacher later comes across and you, you half-heartedly are there and you don't really know and you haven't practiced it. So when it all falls down, you're not ready for game time. You're not ready for that moment. You don't know that all you have to do is stand, stand in the word of God, exercise your faith because the righteousness is not that of your own and you have a deliverance of salvation that is not of your own. He, he delivered you for a time such as this. But if you don't know that, then you can't trust them. And if you don't know and trust them and your faith is weak, and then you can't believe in them. You see how we stair step that. But he tells us, he says that, that if anyone does not stumble in word, he is a, a, a perfect man, able also to bridle the whole body. And what James is highlighting there is what I was just emphasizing there is just that the power flowing through God is in that spoken word. That seed of Christ, he is the word of God, is in you. He's living the spirit to be harnessed the holy spirit not just any spirit the holy spirit that indwells into every regenerated man and woman in christ he bears witness to it and he's just itching to unleash whatever it is that we're willing to yield to and allow god's word to flow through us and that's power that's power to change to change not only your life but the lives around you it's power to equip and power and encourage us for the journey it's power Right. And so he tells us there that it will it'll bridle the whole body because it will convict us. The word will convict us. The word will allow us to change if we receive it. Verse three it says, James tells us, indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths that they may obey us. Right. And, and we turn their whole body. And so see, it's, it's just masterful how James puts it together. And he says, if 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 we don't stumble in word, 
we're a perfect man because we're also able to bridle the whole body. That word, the word of God, not our word, allows us to change in the direction of excellence there, right? That, that, that last part is me adding there, but you can just imagine what James is saying there. He says, indeed, we put the bits in the horse's mouth that they may obey, and we, we turn their whole body. Verse 4, James 3 and 4 says, look also at ships. Also, they are also so large and driven by fierce winds. They are turned by a very small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Right? And in verse 5, verse 5, you highlight it also. Verse 5, James 3 and 5 says, even so the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Boasts great things. It boasts great things. It has the ability to build up, to edify, to exhort, to comfort, to counsel, but it also has the ability to destroy, right? And so James will go on a little further here. He says, see how great a forest, a, a little fire kindles, right? Just a small ember. Just a small ember can turn into a raging thing. And the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. So Lisa was partially right when she said sin, but then she went on to, to the tongue. But the, the correct answer is the tongue, but it is sin, right? She's building a case here, and, and the iniquity here, um, a, world, a world of iniquity. It says the tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. It follows the whole body and sets on fire the course of a nature or, or course of nature, and it is set on fire by hell. Okay, it goes on a little further. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea uh, of the sea is tamed and, and has been tamed by mankind. Okay, right? that's what jogged my memory about our ability. He gave us authority over these things. Okay, keep keep following. But verse eight here is is the answer to or is the, is what goes to our trivia question here. Verse eight, but no man can tame the tongue. It is an unruly evil. It, it is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Unruly evil, deadly poison. Okay, that's that's talking about the tongue, right? But no man can tame the tongue. So in other words, as I say, my, not my words. Don't believe my words, but let's go to the word of God because my words will take you someplace. Go back. All, all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death. But the, what? The gift of God is everlasting life. All right. All right. And so it's with it, we bless our God, our Father. My God. And with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Can we say that one more time? With it, the same tongue, same tongue. With it, we bless our God and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in similitude of God. In other words, made in that image of God. To the other scripture, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat the fruit. That's Proverbs. That's attributed to Proverbs. Okay. Okay, let's go back. Let's go back. It goes on. It goes on. It goes on and tells us out of the same mouth proceed blessings and curses. Uh, Proverbs 3 and 10. And we say this, and you know, religious folk, we say this, and we say this, and we say this, and we say this, right? But go back to the last two weeks. If you're hearers and not doers, right? Matthew 7. And then we go back. And, we, and we, we, we see James in the first chapter, 22 through 25, 22 through 25. And he talks about to not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Okay. He says, but don't, don't just be hearers, but doers. Don't be just be hearers. I know I've said that two or three times, but faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. We as Christians in this penultimate moment, right, we cannot, we cannot go any further without heeding the word of our Lord Jesus Christ, who says those who hear and do, he likens it to a wise man, okay? But those who, who hear but don't do are, are unwise, they're foolish, right? And he's talking about not just the here and now, but the future. Be on that right side, be plugged in and switched on. And for the unbeliever, he, he, the only way to be plugged in is by, by with through Jesus Christ. For the believer, you still gotta plug in 
And, and what's the point of being plugged in if you haven't switched on? It says you're the light of the world, but you can't shine any light unless you're plugged in. Okay? But it's on and it tells us that your practice is as good as all these practices are. Good enough isn't good enough, but God's righteousness is that we not only are hearers, but doers. And part of that doing here is, is out of the same mouth, proceed blessings and cursings. My brother, these things oh, ought God. not be. So are we committed? And what's your commitment level? Right? So sandwiched in between our commitment and, and abiding is our service. And who are you serving? That's really what it's about. Who are you serving? You're serving self, right? Or are you serving the world? Well, if you've come to Christ, if you believed in him for eternal salvation, you got to fix your face, your attitude, as we talked about in Ephesians 4 there. Your attitude has got to be changed. You know, do not be conformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And he goes on and tells us what? That's the, the reasonable service. Transformed by the renewing of your mind. It starts here. It starts with that mind. And so, are you committed to your practice in Christ? Well, out of that same mouth come blessings and curses. And we're, 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 we're blessing God with one, but we're cursing our fellow man. And I told you, I had, it starts here with, with, with the leaders. I, I, I often will say some things that, that might not, most normal people might not consider cursing, but am I bringing glory to God when I'm speaking about the situations? Am I, am I doing that? Well, Lord, you know, I, I, I have some thoughts about this, but what, what, are you, what does your word say? What is your word? Consult that word because you got to get to know him, to trust him, to build those faith reps and then to believe in him. So you know, he tells us that, that the same tongue, the same mouth ought not be speaking those blessings and curses. And ought not be using that same mouthpiece to, to tear down our brothers and sisters in Christ. And even so, those who are unbelievers, there's only one judge, and that's Christ. His word, allow it to convict. Allowed to provoke change. There's so many agendas out there in the world, um, and, and we won't we won't delve into them. But speak the word of God. Show the compassion of God when you're speaking, and let His word convict. And, and He tells us that, that where I mean, throughout the Bible, He told Ezekiel. He, he, t he tells Ezekiel go to the to the people of God, and He tells them whether they receive it or not. But you give the word. Jesus sent out the disciples and he says, whether they receive it or not, but yeah. yours is just to go and to give the word of God. And every time the word of God, this is the importance of putting the word of God into your mouth and allowing it to roll off your tongue. Because every time that goes forth, a seed is being planted. Whether or not that seed sprouts up in your lifetime, whether or not that's, they, they choose to allow God to, to nurture that seed, that's on them. But you've done what you're supposed to do. You don't have to add stuff, right? Let, let let God's recipe take its course. You don't have to add a pinch of salt if it's if it doesn't uh, require it, right? No, no salty attitudes. We don't have to, to be sour about it so it doesn't need some, some sourness, um, some lemons and some other stuff, right? You just lay it out according to what it has there. And if people are really excited about seeing it or, or convicted by it, they'll come back. They'll either come back to you or they'll come back to somebody. But you've done what God's word has said, but we got to stop that. And, it, and again, it comes, it comes from us, religious leaders. Okay. And I come, we got to speak that word into it. And this is the importance about being around spirit-filled, like-minded people that are in the word of God. Not some sort of form of fashion. We, we've seen how that works in the Garden of Eden, right? Sounds, it sounds about right. Okay, we'll do that. I have church every day, and we, we, we're, just, we're just steadily falling. But God's word. Hey, well, so what does God's word say about it? Let's let's go and let's touch and agree with that because our emotions can get us someplace. Our emotions can get us caught up. You know? I mean, that, that's okay, but there's a time and a place. But God's word is of the utmost importance because the life you're saving might not be your own, right? So let's let's practice. Let's practice. It's it's great to talk about. Well, I'm practicing such and such this, but what about our speech? God's word's going forward and it's promoting life, right? Now, we are cursing some things. We are destroying some things, those, those, those yokes, the strongholds, and so forth. That's okay. God's Word talks about that. But 
When it comes to God's people, he is serious about that. I talked about we serve an intentional God. He he offers it to everybody. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Yes, 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 yes. The kingdom of heaven is inclusive. It's not exclusive. It's offered to everybody. Now, whether they choose to receive that or not is, is up to them, but it's freely given, hence free grace. The grace is freely given. We have not earned it. We do not deserve it. And we certainly can't afford it. So who am I? Who am I? I mean, come from the same start point to say, oh, you, you can't have it. Okay. But, but again, don't add any salt to it. Don't add any, any, any sourness to it. Just, just give it. Give the word of God. Yes. Speak the word of God. And oh, I will tell you to see the situations. If you, these last couple of weeks, I, I've, like Emerald, I've to take it up a notch. You're taking a prayer up a notch. And there are times to be surgical in your prayers. There are times when you just need some, some, some clarity from God. And you couple that with some fasting. Boy, I tell you what, you get some clarity from God. But, but he will be amazed. And now if you touch a degree with the word of God, with the spirit of God, with the people of God, you can't show me any place in the Bible where where, where those those elements in, in that recipe, you put that in a pot, boy, God moves some things. He says, look at my people, and he moves some things. And so you start speaking that in an atmosphere, and you start building that faith. You start building it, and it comes. Start hearing some testimonies. But, but James makes this compelling case and he goes down to verses 11 and 12 here it says does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening and now, now what i want you to understand here as well when he talks about the fresh and the, and, and the bitter right you, you you put this in totality with what others his contemporaries paul and peter were speaking and talking about the new man the new woman the new creature right and you associate these things, and especially if you want a, a good reference, in Galatians 5, where, where he talks about the evidence of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit, right? And he talks about the, the lust, the idolatry, and you, you go into Peter's writings, and he talks about um, the causes of the fall, the lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. You look at those things, and you put James right in there, and he's, he's showing there the, the, the old versus the new, the old versus the new, right? And then you consider the audience that, that, that he was given. And he's talking to converted Jews. He's talking to all of corporate Israel. He's talking here to those who would believe. He's talking, hey, look, take off that former self. And in particular, the law and the things that you thought would make you good enough. That, 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 that's just, that's not going to get you there. And then, oh, by the way, don't consider yourself better than all, all those others. Speak God's word. Speak those things and bring them into it. And that's why I put this, this graphic up here. It just talks about James and the Jiffy. And um, you can see it's a credit to, to YMI today. I don't know what YMI stands for, but that's 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 where it's on there. So if you go up on Google on a couple of search engines there, you can find a couple of these in, in a pretty, pretty neat. And it talks about um, uh, our, our, our deeds and, and, and um, our deeds ought to match up in, in terms of James, the, chapter, the second chapter, and we might stumble into that in a couple of weeks here. But with, with, when he talks about faith without works is dead, and that's a whole nother um, bundle that we, we can unwrap. But, but that's your, 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 your words and your deeds and your, your outputs and so forth. That's a whole nother discussion. But over on the right-hand side of that pictorial, you'll see it's just to guard your powerful tongue. That word there, I love that powerful tongue. Your, your tongue is powerful. In James's illustration, talking about how small and unassuming it is, just like a seed, just a seed is a very unassuming thing, but if nurtured and, and done appropriately, a seed can go on blessing more than just yourself. Okay. If done wrong, it could it, it could just go fade away. It won't fulfill its purpose. But your tongue. Your tongue is meant to bring glory to God. And, and by bringing glory to God, there, there is the light of Christ that goes forth. And so it talks about the guard your powerful tongue. It says only God can, uh, can, can contain that tongue if you want to break down the scripture. But only God. Because, again, our old nature springs out those, those things that, 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 that James highlights here in James 3 and 11. He says, does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter at the same time? We're bitter. Uh, because our outputs are sin. Uh, it's sin, but the new regenerated man and woman in Christ 
has the indwelling spirit. And so like a spiritual enema, cleansing us out from, from the inside out, flushing us out. And so just like our walk should be different, just like our thought process should be different, so should our speech patterns. So should our speech. Because we have the confidence in knowing the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ, having become intimate with him and, and the things that he is teaching us. And no, we might not be the subject matter expert, but, but there are things that we can go to. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened us, right? Man does not live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the word of God, right? And it says, my word shall not go out void, but do what it intended to do. My thoughts are not your thoughts, but in order my ways are your ways. And, and you know, God is for us. Who can be against us? You know, uh, for God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, and whoever shall believe shall not perish, but have everlasting life. These words, we start putting it into it. Oh, Ange there. Oh, I'll never be anything. I can't do anything. I won't be anything. God loves us. Greater love has no one than this, that he laid out his life for his friends. He laid out his life for his brothers. All these things. I will never leave nor forsake you. God's word. Right? Instead of, oh, I'll never be anything. You won't be anything. You can't do anything. I mean, is that, is that a little bit of a difference of, of speaking into the situation? The light went into the darkness and the darkness didn't comprehend it. There's all kind of darkness in here. There's suicides, gangs, and, 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 and just all mental and physical states that are that are not of God. Speak God's word into it. Give it a shot. What's the worst that could happen? Things don't change, but I'm telling you, we serve an intentional God. And if you go through thing, this thing called life on purpose, by went through his word and directed by his spirit, you have the power to impact change, yes. change agents, agents of change, however you want to yes. say it. That's us. That's the body of Christ. That's what our that's that's what our, our role is in this world. And so in conclusion here, it talks about, James talks about 3 and 12 here. It says, can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Think, think about that. Brother, it's called a fig tree on purpose. Bear olives. We're not going to not supposed to be barren. Or a grapevine bear figs. Thus, no spring yields both salt water and fresh. My God. Right? And it, it does not bring the two of them. So it all goes back. Are you committed to your practice in Christ? And if you're committed to that practice in Christ, right? If you're committed to that practice in Christ, and just like um, the deeds ought to go out and, and be reflective of that seed of Christ. Your testimony ought to be reflective of the seed of Christ, so should your speech. Because as James tells us here, he tells us that it's such a small thing your tongue is, a very unassuming thing, right? Very unassuming thing, but it's powerful. He talks about the rudder on a ship, how it, it can steer and change direction. The voice coming out of the saints of Christ, the, the body of Christ, you can change some things. Think about it. In Acts 2, on the day of Pentecost, when we're in one place and one accord, right? Hang on. Actually, the, the correct order is, is on one accord and one place. They were in the upper room. They didn't know how this thing was going to going to pan out, going to work out. But they knew if they could just get to that place and pray to their God, their mouths were open, a heart full of thanks, and a mouth full of praise. They were praying to their God, exhorting their God, praising their God. What about us? God released and unleashed the Holy Spirit upon him, and the world was never the same. Think about that. If our tongues would change the direction. Mm -hmm. Just think about that. If our if our tongues just change that, if 10% if of our time and our day is, is, is changing and giving glory to God and not just to self, like, hey, I like me. I look good. I feel good. Woo, glory. Just a 10% increase in efficiency and effectiveness. Right, ten percent. Work in production, this and that. Ten percent increase in efficiency, leading to X, Y, and Z amount of increased output of effectiveness. Ten percent increase of efficiency in giving God the glory, the honor, and the praise before you you go to bed and when you first wake up. Woo. Imagine if you just sit down for lunch. Woo. What if you just sit down for dinner? I, I just gave you. Four opportunities there. So if, imagine when you first wake up, you eat breakfast, you eat lunch, you eat dinner, you, you, you go to bed, that's five times. Now, now ooh, that's that's an increase in that percentage now. You're putting God's word in the situation.
situations, you're putting it into meals. And remember, folks who don't have meals, you're putting it into to whatever endeavor. Hey, Lord, you, you woke me up. You're an intentional God. Yes. So let me live this thing called on purpose. Hey, you allow me to lay down wherever it is. Who and what do you want me to pray for? Or do you just need me to just give you glory so I can receive some things while I'm asleep? And if you get me, think about that. Now, if we just come together. Ready for that when we come to church. Ready when we come to Bible study. If we just connect with one another, we can move some things. So let's heed the word of James. We we learned over the last couple of weeks not to just be hearers and, and, and but be doers. And, and Christ compels us that that, that that if we hear and do, then we're wise folks to yes, build upon the solid foundation. Yes. He never said the storms and the floods weren't coming. He specifically yes. said that the storm. Remember, grace doesn't mean that you're not going to go through anything, but it means that you can go through some of those things. And so what we learn here from James, right, uh, again, coming back, we skipped a chapter, but what, what, what he tells us in the third chapter here, he tells us that we can't bridle that tongue, but we got to mm-hmm. seek out, we got to, in other words, we got to practice, we got to commit our ways to God so that we can serve him to the utmost, we must abide in him, because that tongue is powerful, uh, blessings and curses come out of it, and, and out of that same mouth, allows us to exhibit the power that God has placed inside of us. Yeah. Is that all right tonight? Is that all right? Okay. So I, I, I'm, I'm pretty full there and I hope you are too. We got some, some good references here. And I believe that God is not only allowing us, he's not only allowing us to see where we need to be in the season. But he's taking us on a path because I believe Living Spirit Ministries is in a probationary period. And in and, and that probationary period, generally speaking, in the Bible, when you see them, it's usually some derivative or denomination of, of, of the number 40. All right. And when they come out of that, then, then God reveals some things. And so look for it. Look for, the, look for those signs. And if, if God is speaking into you, come and, and, and let us let us talk. But we're coming out of probationary period because there's some things that I've been in prayer for, some people and some situations, circumstances, some problems, and, and it's just overall things for guidance and direction. But it all starts with that mind, as Paul talked about, and it leads to output, leads to action. We, we, we chastise one another a lot of times and try to correct and rebuke uh, based upon physical actions, but we often leave out that tongue. Focus on that based upon um, what we talked about to consider and to reflect what's coming out your mouth and the reflection is, is does it bring glory to God? That that should be enough for you to get into the word of God and see where he wants you to speak and who he wants you to speak to and how he wants you to speak it. Oh, it should be a good challenge for you. Let's go into prayer. Uh, Heavenly Father, we glory in your holy name tonight. And we thank you for a bountiful word. Yes, Father Lord. God. We came in on empty and we were leaving out full tonight. And Father God, we're, we're, we, we asked that our lives would be altered and be changed. And I believe that you have given us some conviction by with and through your word. And we allow the Holy Spirit to move in us, Father God, that, that our words, right? Father God, our words, your, your word says, let the, 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 the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable on our side. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And so this, Father God, we pray to you tonight. And that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart will be acceptable in your sight. That they might be glory to your name. They might rebuke the devourer. But Father God, edify the men and women in Christ and allow your word to go forth. And go forth to save the the souls that you so eagerly want to come back to you. So Father God, we send your word, not our word. Now Father God, your word also says that we can't tame the tongue on our own. But Father God, we ask for your strength in the midst of our weakness, your grace. And we glory in your holy name, knowing that we have no right, no expectation. But, Father, you have freely given us grace. And so, Father God, because it is free, we ask that we, Father God, with giddy anticipation, receive it to the utmost. We, we take your grace and all that comes along with it. Show us, Father God, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the heavenly realms of you, Father God, our God, the most high God, the sovereign God. And let us place your words in our mouth that it might bring life, Father God to those who would dare to receive. Now, Father God, we pray now for all those who have not accepted Jesus Christ, who have not believed in him for eternal salvation. Let them see Christ crucified and understand that it's freely given, that this day salvation is offered to them, but tomorrow's not promised. So, Father God, for those who have believed, we glory in your holy name. We thank them, Father God, and we ask that they get to a place where they continue to grow. If it be this place, and Father God, let them continue to sup with us, 
and never go hungry again. Now, Father God, for those that continue to stray, to, to stray and to wander aimlessly, let your light go and allow it in, a, in, in your ordained time to guide them back in. And to your name alone be all the glory and honor and praise. Mighty name. Amen. We thank you for attending tonight. And we, we praise the holy name of God for this, this excellent Bible study. If you're in the local area, come and check us out at 951 South McPherson Church Road, Suite 102, Fayetteville, North Carolina, 28303. We'll be holding Sunday service at 11 o'clock as we do every Sunday. And the Lord says the same. Uh, and then come back with us to Bible study. We're learning to walk again one step at a time by with and through the Holy Spirit and his word. And we're just loving on Jesus. That sounds good to you. Come, come, and come. And we thank you now. Go in peace, be blessed, and give some Jesus.